Hey, what's going on, everyone? Vega here for Serpent X Tech, and the Alpheum Bitstream is becoming more available for the lesser FPJs. We originally seen it on like the Super Scalar K10 and the Osprey E300, but now it's becoming available for your Forest Kittens, your TH53s, your C1100s, and your U50Cs. So I'm going to go through how to get yours running on a Ubuntu or Linux based system. Technically, you can run the same commands. Um, within a high bond system and I showed you how to do that in a past video rabbit mining uh, showed you how to do that as well but I'm just going to show you through the Ubuntu system and right now my C1100 is getting about 4.95 giga hash it has dropped down because I'm interacting with the system right now but the FPJ um, has been running really good overnight couple of discrepancies that I'm going to go over uh, so just bear with me here the first things first is we need to get you guys access to the next jtag and so if you go to the next design solutions discord down in the description uh, as i showed in the past go and purchase yourself an next jtag if you're new to fpjs if you're not new to fpjs you should already have what you need but go ahead and grab it uh it doesn't cost much and embrace is pretty cool uh you just come here to the next jtag request it and then they'll tell you hey you know send me a dm and i'll help you get your license the next thing is the Zephron Technology Discord, but I can't invite you to it. If I try to, it says that the invites have been disabled. It's invite only. The FPJ community is very tight knit. Uh, they like to play, uh, you know, with their cards close to their vest. I completely understand. I completely respect it. I'm not trying to step on any toes. I got permission from Whitefire, the developer of the Zeph Miner, uh, to go ahead and share this with you because we want to get the data. We want to get you testing and tuning and sharing your data. Right, so you can share that data in the Alphium Discord, but you're gonna need the miner, which is gonna be under the announcement section. You can see they got a little bit of notes here, which we're gonna talk about uh, in just a moment. But the miner right now is version 1.3. So Zephron um, Alphium Miner 1.3. It's a Dropbox link. I am seeking permission to provide that in the video. I'm not just gonna do it willy nilly uh, because I believe he would like people to be involved in the Discord and get the link not just grab it off of some uh, some video description. So it won't be down there unless I get permission, then it will put it down there. But you can see he's been providing updates, you know, saying, hey, 1.1 is out, test. It's available for the VU35, the TH53, the TH53M, still working on the C1100, so on and so forth. So he's been keeping us updated. It has been a process. And, you know, you got to respect because this person is taking a lot of time out of their, their, their lives to do this. And if you can help, um, in some form or fashion, uh, this person who spends a lot of their personal time coding bit streams for the rest of the mining community, uh, and, and they provide me some crypto addresses, make sure to look for that down in the description as well. I did ask for that if he wanted it, because I know he's spending a lot of time coding for this, coding for that, or whatever the latest project is. But right now, you can see the FPJ is hashing away just fine. How did we get this working? Well, when you're in Ubuntu, it's very simple, right? We can just open Firefox, we can grab and post that drop uh dropbox link download it and then once it shows up in our downloads it's kind of set it and forget it right so go to downloads you can see here i got the uh zephron um or the zeph miner for radiant uh version one version two i got team red miner all the different versions i got my next jtag already in here everything is good to go uh, i have the next jtag 2.8.0 beta which i showed in previous videos uh on how to get it set up so make sure you check those out if you're new to FPGAs. Uh, but once you have the Zeph, uh, Zephron Alpheum Miner, he makes it so much easier than what it was. We can just open this bad boy up and we got all the files, including all the bit streams for the BCU-1525, C1100, uh, CVP-13, ECU-50, FK-33, TH-53, TH-53M, TH-55, and U-200. So uh, this is going to be for your other cards, but... Once you have this and you extracted it, right? I can just right click, open with archive manager, hit extract, extract and show files or close. Now I can come in here and there are some commands that we wanna run because we wanna be able to manipulate the change voltage and the open FPJ loader, which is why I'm going to post all this down in the description. So get the file downloaded to your Linux based operating system, right? Get the uh, the get your next JTAG, get the file downloaded to your Linux based operating system. And now uh, once you know where it's extracted, that's gonna be very important because you want to travel to that folder. And one thing I like to do is I like to make sure that our libraries are updated. So sudo apt get install 
libft di one dash two space dash y. So just copy this, paste it in um, your command prompt. To launch a command prompt from inside the miner is super easy, especially when you're on the Ubuntu system. You just right click the empty space, open in terminal, boom, put that command in. Uh, next one, you got to run chmod because we want to chmod not only the uh, Zephron miner, but also the change voltage and open an FPGA loader. Now, my system, the way I have it set up for security permissions, I have to run sudo, right? So if you run the chmod for all three of these, right, they're all three different ones. It says either or. Once you run these and you're having an issue or you go to launch or run this command and it doesn't work, try the sudo chmod uh, space u plus x space and then the, the program name, the Zephron Alpheum one, version 1.3, the change voltage open FPGA loader. So once you run all of these, now you should be able to run the command to mine. Now there are further instructions and if you look in here uh, in the actual folder, there is a start sh which you can actually modify to have everything you need. I personally like to do it just command style, right? I just open up a terminal a terminal, and I just type out my commands, but you could modify to start sh, and it's gonna be in the readme file. Zephron Wi-Fi has put everything in there for you. It talks about what's what and all that good stuff. So for some of my new people, uh, sudo run the program command dot slash run the program command dash o is going to be your pool slash uh, port address dash o is your wallet address max temp is obviously the max temperature that we want the device to hit before it starts to down clock or throttle or or protect itself dash t is going to be your clocks right so i got 450 470 right now my favorite one is 600 600 uh, I tried 700, 700, and some people were able to push their C1100 even further, but I bump into some issues, but more on that in a moment. Dash L is going to be like loading your bitstream, and, or excuse me, dash V, I forgot that one thing. Dash V is your voltage, right? That's your VCC INT, um, and then dash L is going to be your bitstream load. There's only 15 or 16, so I keep it on 15 because I have a C1100. For some of the FK33s, you might want to use uh, 6, but check out the Discord because... Other people utilizing those FPJs might have different information. And then skip zero. What zero actually means is I want you to change and update the voltage and VCC INT and then program the bitstreams before mining. Dash or the one represents load bitstream only, but don't change the voltage or VCC INT. And two means don't change anything. I programmed the bitstream and voltages already. So I just go with 15 for my C1100. You can see it's it's faster for JTAG clock, 15 megahertz, or six megahertz for the JTAG clock for some of the smaller or lesser FPJs. Nothing, no FPJ is lesser. I'm, you just know what I mean, like the FK33s, TH53s, so on and so forth. So if you literally just go down to the description, I'm gonna put a couple of these pull commands in here. Just make sure you uh, update it, uh, as well as the commands I use to uh, launch it. You just gonna need to extract the files, go into that folder, open a terminal, run those commands I just showed you, right? And then run the pool command or the launch miner command with the pool, wallet address, whatever you need, stuff like that. Test and tune, figure out, figure out what works for you. Not everything is going to work the same. Rabbit Mine did a really good job uh, showing this on Hivon. So I'm sure he's going to be coming out with a video soon about that. So stay tuned. Uh, but I already have a Google Docs where I've been sharing or posting my information. You can copy this and then make it your own. Uh, I won't. I don't want you to add to what I have here. I just want you to copy and make it your own. Um, and again, one of the fa one of my favorites right now, where I'm getting 70 hash per watt, is the 600 on the core clock and uh, 0.6 on the VCC INT. Don't worry about B uh, BRAM and MEM like uh, like we saw here on Casp and stuff like that. You don't need to worry about that when it comes to the Zephron uh, miner. Um, which is what I use for Radiant as well as, uh, you know, Alpheum. Don't worry about adjusting those clocks. It's all going to be about the VCCINT or your, your V-Core uh, and your clock and then your hash rate. And I'm also adding additional information like, you know, what are the error rates? Is it locking up? So on and so forth. So I'm still testing and tuning. These yellow ones I have already done. Uh, the white ones, since I copied it over from Radiant, I'm still running through just to see what the lowest is and the highest. So still testing and tuning, but I welcome your data and information. A couple of tidbits I want to warn you about and that uh, Whitefire also warns about. It says here, number one, remember that Alpheum bitstreams can only 
produce shares with difficulty four or more. So if the pool you're using gives you a difficulty of less than four, you will get hardly any credit for the hash and the auto difficulty adjustment will never resolve it, right? And he goes on with some other key points. Something I would mention to you is even though I left the system running for over six hours, I was getting about 4.4 giga hash. Hero miners did not want to see it. I've been on Viper pool, uh, which I recommend doing so because of course we have too much hash rate on one singular pool. Hero miners has uh, over 80% of the net hash. Let's kind of decentralize that guys. Let's, let's get this network decentralized. Let's spread out our hash rate, please. But uh, either way with my C1100, the hash rate that I was getting locally was not representative on the pool that I was on with Hero Miners. However, with um, Viper, it is. So uh, choose a better pool. That Hero Miners is a good pool. Just decentralize your hash rate, test and tune, get your babies up and running, and share with the data or share with the community in the Alpheum uh, uh, Discord under the Zephron technology. Again, I can't invite you, but get in here if you're not already um, in here. And as far as profitability, it's kind of in between a 4090 and a 4080 super and a 4080, right? So right now I got a 4090 selected and it's making about $2 a day before electricity. Uh, if it's not 20 cent per kilowatt hour, then it's, you know, obviously let's, let's change that real quick. Cause 20 cent is the U S average. Um, if we change that to 10 cent per kilowatt hour, uh, then after electricity, you're making a dollar 26, which is about right. Um, but I'm, I'm paying a little bit more in electricity here where I'm at. So $2 a day, $1.25 after electricity, which if we look at the C1100 on hashrate.no, Ironfish is the most profitable with $1.21 or 25 per day, really a dollar after electricity. Um, you know, Alpheum Bitstream is, is making this device either a little bit more profitable or a little bit less profitable. It's really going to come down to what are your clocks and settings. Obviously, we could push this, this bad boy uh, to the top and we can increase the voltage and push the clocks but anything over 700 or 650 would crash for me i would get a hardware error it would say increase voltage and, and de decrease clocks but some people are able to push 720 on the clocks i just can't for some reason um it will say my c1100 or you know i say here that my c1100 errors but yours might not so try it test in tune you might be able to get better hash than i can you might be able to clock higher than i can silicon lottery thermal environments uh conditions stuff like that also, if you go to close the program, if I control C this, just like you would with Team Red Miner, and it pops up this exact message, right? It says, sign in, uh, received, exiting. If you if final confirmed frequency is more than 150 megahertz, do not reprogram the FPJ. You need to either lower the frequency or power down your rig. If it does not go, like for example, I have it set for 600. If it does not go, you know, 580, 560, 540, and it's like clocking down, if it doesn't do that, you need to shut down and restart your rig or shut down your rig and power back on. Because if you don't do that um, and you try to load your other FP, your, your bitstream again, you could cause some issues uh, that you don't want to deal with. So if you see that error, restart, start over again. But test, take the data that I'm providing here, compare that with what Rabbit Mining might be providing in a little bit. Compare that with some of your colleagues, get into the Discord, share the data with one another, white fire, the Alpheum Discord, so on and so forth, and uh, be respectful. Again, these guys are, are very tight-knit. Uh, they don't mess around. They play things close to the vest. And if you're disrespectful or if you do things or talk about things uh, in a public setting that you do not have permission for, uh, you're going to get in trouble as far as, uh, as you know, maybe kick from the group or whatever like that. Then don't do that. Just be a part of the community. I got permission from Whitefire. I'm just looking to make sure I can get permission to put the the actual uh, file that's inside the announcements, the drop uh, Dropbox file. I'm just that's the last thing I'm waiting for. So if I can get permission, it's going to be down in the description. But everything is going to be down there, including the steps uh, and the commands that I ran to get this up and running on my Ubuntu slash Linux based operating system, which technically you can use again on a hive on if you're a little bit more familiar with that environment and those commands but that's gonna do it for today's video do me a favor on the way out hit the like button make sure to get subscribed hit the notification button to stay up to date as well as check out links in the description to help support the channel and what we do here you just have yourself a wonderful day take care i'll catch you next one